Jackson, Kylie Dugan, Cassie Eckstein, Kelsey Jones, Molly O'Rear, Abby Hillman, Ali Anderson, Lindsay DeSacco, and Abby White. We're underway. The racers in white, beacons in gray, and the racers going right to left as you view the screen. Racers looking to shrug off that loss. Late penalty decision going against them. So here we see Haley Cole, her first touch on the ball back to Mary Hardy, who was an able deputy for Cole while she was away. Yeah, Mary played a good games while Haley Cole was out with an injury. Um, she's only a freshman, but she shows she can do a lot. And uh, definitely a true freshman on the field for the racers. Megan Wilson picks the ball up and concedes possession to the Beacons. This is their first chance to play with it at their feet as they send this up. It'll be Wilson again. Beacons look to be in a 4-2-3-1 formation with Kelsey James at the tip of that attacking spear as we see Hardy pressured there by DeSacco looking for options. Flicks this back to Payne. Payne trying to find an option in the middle. Cut out by the Beacons. Back to Hardy. She's trying to play this up the line. It's cut out by Hillman. Now into the middle. O'Rear pushes this off. Beacons looking for forward options. Asako making a back run. An important interception there by Hardy. As Asako would have had plenty of space, that ball would have got in behind. Yeah, that was a great read by Mary. Um, getting in the passing lane so that through ball doesn't go through. Because uh, if Mary didn't uh, get that ball, Asako would have been in. It would have been across in the box. Asako, our player to watch, Hardy looked to be trying to feed her on this near side for the Beacons, trying to skip past Hardy. Some really good physical play there by Hardy to win a goal kick for the Racers. Yeah, that was a great defensive play. Good job on Hardy using her body um, and shielding to Sokka off the ball. Um, like I said earlier, she's only a freshman, but she's proven she can do a lot more than a lot of freshmen that come in. The Crest waves her defenders forward on that far side. Botker was in acres of space, so we'll see if maybe that's something the racers grow wise to for Villacrest's distribution. This is first off the head of Shrimp. I'm able to flick this back. It'll be picked up by Anderson. Anderson now out to Dugan. Dugan working against Bodker. Bodker comes out best on that encounter. And now to Shrimp. Had the ball received under some pressure, able to get it back to Cole. Cleared upfield. This will go back to Hardy. Hardy trying to find a young and just ran out of field for that ball to Young. Um, I really think those through balls for the racers um, onto up to Saray are gonna work very well. She looks like she's pretty uh, a lot faster than the defenders that Valparaiso has in the back right now. So I think those through balls are gonna be very helpful if they can complete those passes. Henry on the ball, I think that might be her first touch. Now Edder skips past one looking for space and goes over the ball on the ground and the referee will call a foul against Etter as she was just outstretched. And we'll take a look at our keys to the game. First up for Valpo, we'll be looking for them to really capitalize on that build-up play, use that midfield of theirs. It looks they are going over the top on this instance. Yeah, the Beacons show they can possess the ball pretty well, and uh, a lot of their build-up play comes through that midfield and fitting the balls out wide and having runners in the box. And for the racers, we'll be looking at that counter-attacking play and more importantly the counter-attack that might start up high in the field from that press as Soraya Young had a field day against Illinois State as there was a lot of turnovers high up in the field. Edder also grabbed herself a hat trick. She was on the ball there. She laid it off to Botker now. Young on it again but yeah that counter-attacking will be important for the racers here today. Yes, uh, Saraya Young, she's been very big in the offensive front for the racers this year. Um, and if she can get on the ball and get just get it to her feet, and she'll make a lot of plays. Young on the ball here now and gets tripped up from behind. That will be a free kick to the racers. As it was Abby White who played a tackle through the back of Young. I feel as if that was a smart um tackle right there. Maybe a little bit higher up the field, but it was pretty smart. Um, they know Saray creates a lot of the attack, and um, if she would have got that ball off, uh, Edder was right in there. Wilson steps away. It'll be Haley Cole to take. As Wilson aerial presence, I'm sure she'll look to get on the end of this cross. Ball chipped in towards the near post, and it was Morgan Bodker who was there, but just got under a bit too much. Unable to deflect it goal ward. 
Yeah, that's a good ball by Haley Cole. Maybe if it was just a little higher, I think they would have got a better touch on it and could have been a goal. Yeah, an awkward position. Not sure if you need to go low and dig it out. And uh, obviously, Mo Bodker just getting underneath it a little bit too much as this is sent away by Coriel. First header won by Shrimp. Tripped up is Henry, so it'll be another free kick to the racers. Yeah, the Beacons are a lot more physical. I would say one of the physical teams that the racers have played against this year. They're not afraid to put their bodies on the line and really get stuck in. So it's going to be a battle that the racers are going to have to deal with um, all game today. Wilson free kick just on the attacking side of the halfway line for the racers. This is put in towards the edge of the 18-yard box. Hardy was there, but first put away by the Beacons. Now pushed in by Bodker, and it'll be a racers throw in. Cole on the ball now, trying to find some space and an option as he's just sworn by Valpo players. Bodker back up. Kelsey James did well, but possession conceded again to the racer. Shrimp now working on this right wing back to Payne. Payne, ball gets stuck underneath her feet and then taken away from her, but a good slide tackle keeps this ball in play. Young trying to seize the opportunity. See if Valpo can just clear their lines as far as Hardy. Now up to Shrimp. Shrimp goes for this option back to Botker. She'll play this up for Etter. And her second touch takes her out of trouble to Henry. A Cole on the ball. Racers trying to find some control here in the midfield. Young sent chasing will be a throw in. Some good pressure by the racers here early. Yeah, they're really pressing the beacons right now, making them give up a lot of balls in the midfield, um, which is very big um, and very unlike the beacons. They usually control the ball in the midfield, but the racers are on relentless pressure right now. Megan Wilson for the long throw. Fine shrimp. She swivels and shoots, but blocked by a beacon. Beacon again trying to clear their lines. Bodker pressing James, and the first touch came off the Valpo player, so it'll be another racers throw in. Down the line for Young. Nearly falls to Cole. Will get back to Young. Young trying to find space for a cross. Cuts it back. Both players end up on the floor. Back to Cole. Cole trying to find an inch of space, but some really good defense here. And the ball does get put in the middle, but no racers on that near post. Race Bodker now doing really well. Just feed that ball out to the wing. Racers looking composed here. Henry looking for an option. Shrimp takes up a good position in between two players, lines up a shot, and that'll be Coriel's first save of the afternoon. It's not a bad shot. I just think maybe she could have either put a little more on the ball. Um, it was very easy for the keeper to deal with. See if the racers can keep that pressure up as Valpo of a loose pass here. We'll see the racers push up the field, their back line. Cleared away, and only as far as Cole, but difficult first touch and ball back with Valparaiso. Played in over the top, no runners, so Villacrest will come to grab this. Yeah, it looked as if Kelsey James and Dasuko both showed feet and neither ran in behind. That's when one has to show feet and run runs in behind. Etter now, ball over the top. Etter in space and she'll get to this. Good first touch, trying to get to the end line. Ball put across to Payne on the back post. Payne, header, and off the goalkeeper. Important save there by Coriel. Racers' first great chance of the game came on the head of Payne. Yeah, no, Payne does a good job of getting herself in the box for all crosses. Um, she always knows that cross is going to come off, and she's always there on that back post. And she's had a few goals this year that she's put in the back of the net that way. Payne, joint top goal scorer for the Racers with Etter. Etter looking to play provider on that instance, as it'll be Grace Bodker to take the corner. Racers crowding the goalkeeper. Put it on the back post, and Bodker was rising on a tested, but difficult to produce some power. She's backpedaling now, ball chipped in over the top. Cole now again, and a bit of a scramble there in the box. And it'll get 
eventually cleared away by the Valpo de defenseman. Yeah, the racers are really uh, providing a lot of pressure and causing a very big uh, problem in the up there for the Beacons to deal with. They just can't get out. They just keep them pinned in. I think it will come down to those players as this is put in. Again by Wilson, chips this in towards the back post. Goalkeeper stays on her line, he'll fall to Payne. Payne tries to sort her feet out, she'll have to pull back. Out to Cole, Cole, good feint there and just runs out of time. So fall to Shrimp, Shrimp squares it across and taken out and that will be advantage played by the referee. Ball played in by Hardy, Hardy to Cole. Hardy on the ball now and just ran out of room as this will eventually get put back out for a throw in. It's great play by the ref. Some great play by the referee and great play by the racers as that was nearly Hardy one on one with the goalkeeper. Yeah, you got to give the ref a lot of credit. Um, he, a lot of teams were getting mad that they stopped it. Some people want that foul, and then some people rather not have that foul. I think he did a good job on not making that call. Kelsey James pressuring Bodker back to Villacrest. I think if Alpo continues to struggle to play out of the back with this racers press. I think she'll be an important player as, you know, just provide some control and, and get those Valpo players up as see some good physical defense there and some good shielding as well by Molly O'Rear. Yeah, Fresh. I've actually seen Kelsey James um, play for a very long time. We used to play at the same um, club called FC Pride in Indianapolis. So um, I know a lot of what she's capable of, and if she gets that ball at the feet, um, she'll definitely have a few chances, and she could possibly put them away if the racers – don't keep an eye on her. Sacco into James. James, good flick on for DeSacco. Her first chance here now and put across the near side. Wilson's first touch a little bit close, but able to clear it on the second chance. Young now trying to shield that ball away. We've seen her do that so effectively so far this season. Just easing off that defender and then chasing the ball back down. Yeah, the Valpo did a really good job on covering for each other. Um, which is going to be very huge because they know, obviously, they've watched film on Saray and know that she's quick. She can get in behind. She comes up with a lot of balls that you don't think she would actually come back up with. Hillman on the ball there to make the interception. Hillman, defensive player of the week, honors for Beacons. And Edder takes a stab at this, can't clear it away. It'll fall to Dugan. Dugan pulls it back, put into the midfield now. O'Rear looking to create space, and this is down the throat of Villacrest. No problem for her. Yeah, that was a good turn on her, on O'Rear's um, part, and she just didn't strike the ball like she wanted to. Villacrest goes long here. This will be first one by Valpo put out for a throw-in. As far as weather goes this afternoon, it's a overcast day, not too much wind. So nothing for the goalkeeper to contend with. And your coaches for the racers, it's Matt Lodge at the helm. And for the Beacons, it's John Maravich in charge of his 15th season for Valparaiso. Chance here for Dugan. She lines up a left-footed effort. Dangerous area. Bodker had to deal with it. Dugan on it again. She watches this go out for a throw-in. Taken quickly, and this is put across the near side, but no Valpo players crashing into that box. Be an easy claim for Villacrest. Yeah, Dasuko, she puts in a lot of good crosses, and um, she puts in a lot of good crosses, and as a player, I'd be a little frustrated with my teammates because she gets a lot of crosses off and creates a lot of chances for the Beacons. They just don't, no one's crashing the box like they need to be. Payne nods that on, but Young hadn't strided that direction yet as a rear and pain come with a collision. This foul will go for the racers on this instance. Officials today, George Major is the man in the middle with Donovan Eubank and Jeff Pulley on either side. And then Don Eubank Sr. is the fourth official today. Ball one here at the 18-yard box by Young, and this is a miscue by Hillman, but able to get it away on the second chance. Nervy moment there for Valpo as Bodker calls off Villacrest as she treats into her line on the ball here now. A 
No pressure on the goalkeeper, so Villacrest can take her time to play this out to Wilson. Looks as if the, the Beacons are kind of sitting in. I think they know that Murray is a very possessive team. Um, and if you leave a lot of gaps open, they will play right through you. So it looks like they're kind of pinning in and trying to attack them on their own mistakes. Payne against Hillman here does really well to get it to Hardy. Hardy chips this up to Cole. Great find there by the freshman. Cole, the runners on both sides playing the one-two with Young. Cole now on her left foot and slices it wide. Just couldn't get her feeding, her footwork correct there on that instance. Yeah, that was good build up play by the racers. Like I said, they're, those one, two passes are gonna be very crucial. Um, they'll be able to beat the Beacons with those a lot. So um, they're just gonna have to be staying in passing lanes and making sure the racers aren't able to complete those and get another chance just like that. I think the vision initially by Mary Hardy was also excellent just to chip that ball into Cole who had taken up space and a pocket there in the middle. Yeah, Haley Cole likes to sit in those pockets and pick up the ball. She sits right behind that defensive midfielder. Um, and we have a lot, or Murray State has a lot of players that can play those balls through, so if she continues to sit in those pockets, she'll get one. Cole here on the ball now, back to Wilson at her showing feet and on the ball here now. Doesn't have tons of options in front of her. She'll just have to keep backpedaling now to Grace Bodker. She thinks better as Anderson was about to crash the middle and cut off that potential pass to Morgan Bodker. Plays it safe for Valpo throw. Yeah, the Kelsey James doing a good job uh, being that lone forward up top and making sure to keep the ball to one side. That's why um, Edder didn't have much where to go because Kelsey James just was cutting out all those outlet passes. Bodker here now, Payne getting into a bit of a battle with Hillman. DeSacco trying to flick this on for James. Mo Bodker handles it well. Hardy skips away and trying to play in Young. This will stay in bounds. Sacco left it, now chance for Cole. Space opening up. Cole looking for options, playing out Etter. Etter's onside, Etter takes a shot and a good save there by Coriel. Had to make herself big as it was a good, powerful effort by Etter. Yeah, the Beacons just aren't on the same page right now. They're, a lot of their passes, they get one touch and they think the other player's gonna get there. They're not really, uh, doesn't look like they're communicating too well on the field right now. Coriel dwarfed a bit by Megan Wilson, who's trying to block her vision. Botker to take this on the near post, first put out by Dugan. Kelsey James just clears this away down the field. It'll go out on the racer's sideline. And the Beacons will push up. Botker all the way back to Villacres. Botker. Trying to play this in for Hardy. But switch places just a bit with Payne as she had moved more infield. Payne naturally right-footed, so her tendency may be to drift into those middle areas. Here she is now and plays the one touch pass, but didn't come off. Hillman now looking for options, plays it in the middle. Shrimp seeds the foul. Yeah, I'd say that's kind of a soft foul. Um, Tori Shrimp did her job, she just wasn't letting her turning and then I want to say that was Haley Cole right there. She kind of was just that extra piece so they could win the ball. So I don't think it was much of a foul, but it helped the Beacons get out of trouble. Yeah, a bit of a jail, get out of jail free card for Beacons as Anderson didn't really have anywhere to go as Henry's brought down in a heap as Molly O'Rear continues to make herself a nuisance for those racers midfields as she's been quite a few tackles as she's trying to win that ball higher up the field. For midfielders, exactly the player you don't want to be dealing with uh, on an afternoon like this. Oh yeah, mo de most definitely. Sure, uh, many uh, players would have said you're very gnat-like in your, uh, <laughs> your annoyance of them. Just a few times. I actually used to have like a little nickname my club coach gave me. <laughs> Ball falls now to Young. Young trying to feed in Cole again. She'll try to cut this back for Young. Young, open goal, and the Racers 
grab the early goal here after 20 minutes allotted against Valpo. Yeah, no, that was very good play. Uh, very good pressure by the racers up top with Cole and um, Soraya up top. Uh, they're a great duo. Um, and I bet that's Haley Cole's happy to be back. That's her first assist in stepping back on the field um, against SIU. Haley Cole doing really well there as she was able to work herself into a great position. Soraya Young, beautiful peel off to just be in that central position, pass put on a plate. And the racers grab an early deserved lead, I think, here in the first half. Oh yeah, it was well deserved. The racers have applied that pressure this entire half so far, um, the first 20 minutes. And um, it was only a matter of time until they got that first goal. Now they just gotta stay composed, stay com um, and just be ready because the Beacons, they are a team that can come back and um, get a goal at any point in time in the game. Beacons found themselves also down a goal on Thursday in Nashville, and that was actually their first comeback win since last season. So something they've had to deal with on this road trip already. Yes, they're very capable. Um, I want to say they came back in like the last 10, 15 minutes of the game. Um, and they got a PK that won them the game and they just settled in and played very well the rest of that night. It was definitely a really great second half by the Beacons as maybe they were they were certainly outplayed in the first half by Belmont. I'm sure Belmont would have been upset that they didn't take their chances, but even if you're not necessarily the better team on the day, the signs of a good team are winning ugly, which uh, I'm sure Valpo won't mind going back up to Indiana with three points today, even if it's ugly. Oh yeah, um, there's a lot of games that you're gonna have to just scrape out and Valpo did that on Thursday against the Bruins. They had to scrape out that game and not every win is a pretty one, but a win is a win. Racers win a corner. It'll be Bodker to take and Haley Cole again doing a good job as she forced the issue there against the Valpo defender. Yeah, I'm sure Lodge is very happy to have Ra uh, Haley Cole back on the field for the racers. Grace Bodker to take. This put in at Megan Wilson, and Coriel got a fist to it. So stay in play via Payne. Now back to Hardy Hardy, trying to go through the legs of the Valpo defender. That was Cassidy Eckstein, who was spared a blush as she was able to get a foot on it. So Ray Young sticks out a foot, and it will be a goal kick for Valparaiso. Yeah, if the racers keep applying this pressure, there's going to be plenty of more goals in this game for them. Coriel to put this away. Tori Shrimp there again, and a consistent player in those aerial duels in the midfield, and certainly a, a large figure in that midfield at a six-foot frame. Yeah, Tori, she wasn't starting at the beginning of the year, but she'd come into games, and she's just earned her way into that starting lineup, just um, making big plays, always winning the ball in the air in the midfield for the racers. She's a big part of, of the aerial um, in that midfield for ball the racers. Ball now here in the middle. Cole on the end of its second snap shot and this will go away for a corner kick. Sorry to cut you off there, Maya. No, you're good. <laughs> or a goal kick, rather. Addie Joyner comes in, the leading goal scorer for the Beacons and looks to be stepping into the right back position is Sam Gatunis. Number three here on this near side of your screen. First ball won by Valpo. Gatunas immediately gets involved here, able to clear it into a midfield position. Hardy on it now, looking for Soraya Young to run on to this one, and it'll fall to DeSacco. Bodker in a battle with Joyner and went through the back of her. It will be a free kick for the Beacons. Emma Morrison stride over to take this. Valpo not necessarily 
pouring players into the box. It's still fairly standard formation by them, and this is put in towards the edge of the 18. Bodker able to win the first header. Henry the second does fall to Henry. Out for Payne. Payne looking for space to go up line, but she'll take a throw in, I'm sure. Yeah, the Beacons, they seem pretty calm right now for being 1-0 down. I mean, it's only been 25 minutes into the half, but um, I think they believe in themselves, and I, um, they know they can get right back in this game. They just need to get to get on the same page. They have a lot of disconnect. Good man on call. Henry twists away from Valpo player. Bodker up the line for Young. This is Morrison defending, and it'll be a free kick against Young. It was a good flop by the Valpo defender. I mean, it was a foul, but it was it was kind of a soft one. Ref belling them out just a little bit. Ball played in quickly as Coriel goes to Graf. Morrison now. Cole trying to provide the pressure, and Henry did well not to concede a foul there, and it'll go all the way back to Coriel. Yeah, the racers are um, applying a lot of their pressure to the midfield. Uh, Law just prepared them pretty well as far as how um, the Beacons midfield plays, so they're not letting any of those passing lanes get through, creating a big um, problem for the Valpo offense to get started. Ball one here in the midfield. Henry sticks out an important leg, so rear was able to get on the ball, here she is now. O'Rear looking for space, looking for options, but DeSacco, her not on the same page as DeSacco was showing feet. And we'll see another change, this time for the racers. It'll be Cam Barber coming in as Lauren Payne checks out. Lauren Payne, one good shot already today. That header that was parried over by Coriel. And it looks like Cam Barber will come in on this right wing where she's featured recently. The ball never came in, so it'll be a throw in for Valpo at a high position as that's the second instance today where Hardy's throw in and this one is cleared eventually by Wilson. Lining up a shot. Falls here now again for Valpo. Assessing their options to Sacco. Good ball in. See if Hardy can get there. Sacco cuts inside and tries to beat Hardy twice. She gets on the ball here now. Falls in the middle. And a great reaction save. Racers still need to clear and eventually put away by Wilson as DeSacco had a really good cutback for Joyner, but great reaction save there by Villacres. Yeah, the tables have turned real fast. Uh, Valpo's on the attack very heavy right now, so the racers just need to stay on. Um, on the same page and kind of communicating. Uh, Wilson did a good job of helping and bailing Jenna out. That was a great save by Jenna, though. Cam Barber concedes the corner kick. This will be Anderson to take. We'll see if she knows the uh, the hack here at Murray State. Yep, she does. So she'll open up the gate, try to give her a bit more running room. Yeah, a lot of teams that came here even haven't really opened that gate too much this year. Clipped in towards the near post, and Villacrest has to clear it off her line, and it will be a Valpo goal as Villacrest was able to palm it away, but only as far as a beacon put it in the back of the net, tied up here at once. That was a good ball in. Uh, Jenna did as much as she could having a Valpo attacker in front of her on that corner. Um, I think she made it hard for Jenna to catch that ball, but... For 1-1 one, one with 16, 17 minutes left, so Valpo knew they could get right back in this game. So it's gonna it's gonna be a great game here at Cutchin Field today. That was Addie Joyner who just added to her goal tally as she still sits atop the Valparaiso ranks as this is put in over the top. As there was another change, it was Morgan Parker who came in. Sydney Etter made way as looks like Parker's sitting in this middle position and 
Cole has been shifted out to the left. Yeah, um, just a second ago, you could see that uh, Valpo is talking to their players and the defense, letting them know where Saray is at all times. Um, they think they have a lot more time on the ball, but then Saray just appears up out of nowhere and gets that foot on the ball, gets that tackle in, and pins them right back where they're just at. But that goal has definitely given the Beacons a lot more um, explosiveness and more energy before than when they started this first half. Barber here now. Barber looking for space, trying to find Cole here on the far side. Cole back to Shrimp, and Shrimp ball gets away from her, and she tries to clip this out to Saray Young. She'll keep it in bounds. First time cross. The racers will get a corner kick. Yeah, you can tell this game is going to be very back and forth, both very good sides um, here at Cutchin Field. Valparaiso sitting second three points behind the Bears with game in hand as this Paul is put in at the near post, put away by Dugan. Joiner now working against Soraya Young, but Soraya Young's got pace for days and gets in a bit of a scrap, and we'll see what direction this goes as it will be a free kick for the racers as... Normally, whenever Saray is involved, uh, she doesn't really get the benefit of the doubt on most decisions from the referee, but uh, got it there as Joyner just, her tackle just uh, extended a bit beyond a physical play into a foul territory as this will be Wilson. And the fourth official will march off the 10 yards. Interesting, never seen that happen, but I guess because he's just the closest one yeah, to the ball. Never seen it, but makes sense. <laughs> Bit proactive there from the refereeing crew. This ball put in a great position. Falls. Cole took a stab at it. She gets her feet caught up there, and it'll go back. Parker, Bodker now. She has the switch across the field. She finds it in the form of Wilson. Paint, or, uh, Barber in plenty of space if she can find her, but pass two in field. Now Valpo's running at the racers. Dugan looking for options. Joiner showing short in the middle. I really like how the racers, when they lost that ball, everyone sprinted back. You see all ten players in front, or all nine players in front of the uh, defense. And a really good ball there will be a corner kick for Valparaiso out as it was Joiner, who just caused enough pressure for Villacres, who had to do something about it. See another sub here. Eckstein coming off, and it'll be Chase Ray coming in. Anderson. This is again on the near side. Villacrest punches, gets a bit more distance on this occasion. Cole and Soraya Young able to play the one, two. Three against one for the racers here. Young trying to skip away. Two racers in front of her, and I believe they're both going to be in offside position here as the racers have the Valpo defense at their mercy, but unable to hold their run. Yeah, I think in that moment, Soraya, before that, I think it was number three who sprinted back on the Valpo defense. She should have played um, either Cole or Mary Hardy through because she they were both on sides at that point. She tried to play it at the last minute. Sacco putting in a good ball here on the near post as she was battling with Bodker. It will be a corner kick for the Beacons. Um, but that just goes to show you, like, the racers could be on attack, and then next thing you know, the Beacons are back in the racers' territory. So um, both teams are very capable of scoring goals. Um, it's just going to be which defense can prevent that. Very back-and-forth game, and still only one Beacon truly back as Coriel is near the midfield circle so the racers still have that counter ability this ball played in the near post wilson there ball pings around in the box it's even get cleared by cole and it does anderson showing on the ball here now trying to open up this cross far post and a good punch there by villacrest as the valpo players were crashing into that back post chase Ray, her first involvement, working against Barber. And an offside 
from Dugan as she was just caught on the other side of that line. These erasers get a free kick. But that just goes to show you what the racers are capable of if they get that counterattack. They're going to send players' um, numbers forward, and when they lose the ball, they're going to bring numbers back. They all hustle back and get back in shape. Wilson trying to play in a ball for Young, and Coriel stays on her line. This will be a corner kick for the racers, so dangerous position from not too complicated of a strategy as that was just played over the top by Megan Wilson. Yeah, the racers are looking for Soraya to run onto those balls, create um, a little bit of hectic in the up top forward for um, the racers and just create a lot of hectic in the defense of the Valparaiso. Racers crowd the penalty spot. Wilson on the goalkeeper. Bodker to take. First ball won by Valparaiso will be Morgan Parker. She'll get this back for Barber. Barber. Trying to find a bit of space. Now trying to play in Young. Beamed at Young, and she did her best just to get ahead on it. Stop her from going out of play. A rear here, able to, unable to get away. And don't think Valpo were too impressed with the uh, referee not blowing the whistle there. Young trying to play the pass out to Cole. Graf now back to Coriel. I think the racers did some. Um watched a film on the goalkeeper. A lot of those through balls, they see that she doesn't come out to get them. So I think that's why they're very um, focused right now on trying to play those through balls to Soraya to get um, a touch onto them or just to cause pressure in the defense for Valparaiso because they know their keeper, she's going to stay on the line. Coriel urging her team forward. Morrison and Graf able to find Anderson who picked up a pocket. A rear now able to drive. Henry working back and trying to put that through ball, and this will be a snapshot by Joyner, testing her luck. Yeah, that was a good run by Joyner, um, trying to split the defense. Uh, and I think Morgan Bacher got a touch on that. If she didn't get a touch on that, the Joyner was clear, and clear as day. Villacress up for Parker, and this one hooked back towards the racer goal. Villacress will come out. On the ball here now and go short to Bodker. Bodker's first touch a little bit away from her, but Joyner wasn't fully committed. Wilson checks back. Villa Cress. Racer's a bit more patient here in their buildup. Young looking to make the run. Cut out first time. And Valpo will see if they can retain. It will be a racer throw in on the far side just under 10 minutes here in the first half. Exciting first half from an attacking standpoint for both teams. Yeah, after the Valparaiso goal, um, they've stepped up their play a lot more. They look more into the game and just more aware versus when the game first started. The racers were very heavy on attack, and they um, kind of came into the game as time gone on. Peyton Evans comes in as well as Dana Fish. A rear now and a little win, a throw in as Valpo just marks this up the far side. Dangerous ball there by Henry. Possession conceded in the midfield. Fish's first touches were clean as she's getting involved here now in this one a bit. Gives Gutanis a bit to do. Gutunis, rather. Gutunis. She was on time, but I'm sure she'll worry about that later. <laughs> That's the last thing on your mind when you're on the field. Ball put in for Barber and just unable to ever get it under control, really. Wilson steps in, but unable to win it. Does get it now, and Wilson tries for a slide tackle. Ball will get all the way back to Villacress.
Young still checking over her shoulder, always trying to make sure that she's on side with that last defender. Wilson now again trying to play up for Young and again cut out by White on that far side. Battle here on the far side to see who will get the throw in and will get eventually cleared up. Megan Wilson will have to deal with this. Put this out of play. Yeah, the defenders of uh, Valparaiso's defense has really came into the game. Uh, as they see a ball come in, the others drop, and then one goes for the header just in case if one misses it. They're not playing a very high line. They're rotating very well. Um, and I really think that all started from the goal, just getting themselves back into the game. Valpo with trying to assert some more control on the game here as we head into the second half. Falpa also had a pretty good constituents of uh, fans that traveled with them here today as there's quite a bit of brown and gold as Joyner trips up Wilson coming in. Yeah, no, they traveled pretty well. I mean, I'm guessing a lot of the parents came from the Belmont game and stayed in overnight in Nashville with them and then um, traveled up here to Murray. Who doesn't like a night in Nashville? It'll be Villacrest to take the goal kick for the Racers. Just under five minutes here in the first half. Gracie Pack has checked into the game for the Racers, so a bit more aerial presence. Young puts this up to Barber. Barber trying to find a way through and unable to as the Beacons were swarming. Fish now back and Gatunis unable to get any control over that. Henry, back for Wilson. Barber, good first touch. Trying to drive it wide into the middle. There's Parker and ball will fall back and have to be cleared away by Morrison. Wilson strides over to take this long throw and that'll be moments where Gracie Pack is uh, very helpful for you as she'll provide some Aerial presence here late in this half. Wilson up to pack, trying to play the flick on. It'll fall to Evans, who's come into the game. Wilson driven along the ground. Referee unable to avoid, and we'll see what the decision is here because uh, a few weeks ago there was an <laughs> equally interesting decision. If it's, if, it how, if it's how it worked the last game, it'll be a racer's uncontested drop kick at the edge of the box. We'll see what they do. And in this instance, they give it to Valparaiso. So I'm guessing he gave it to Valpo because they cleared it, but there wasn't really clear possession of who had the actual ball. Um, but I mean, I feel as if, if I was on the Valparaiso team, I'd be a lot happier if they gave me the ball versus what they did, I think, when we played. I'm not exactly sure. I can't, I can't quite remember. I know it was our first win, um, an inaugural win for Murray State in the MVC, or the first win of the MVC. Um, we won that game, or Murray State won that game 3-1, to one and... That exact situation is what happened for Murray State, and that's how they got that second goal. Graf back for Anderson. That was Indiana State who the racers were victorious over. Thank you to our producer, Brandon, for telling me in my ear. I appreciate that from him. <laughs> Barber trying to keep this one in. It'll be a throw in for the racers. Wilson again to come in, try her hand at a long throw. This one has some good distance and 
Racers on, able to win the second ball. Back to Bodker. Bodker forced to come in field. She switches this across. Barber has to commit. Abby White does a really good job, but this will get eventually cleared up by Wilson all the way to the goalkeeper. Matt Lodge urging his team to press here. Just one minute left as the racers would love to grab a lead goal here in the dying embers of this first half. Yeah, and I would press heavy in the last minute. Um, that's what got them their first goal in this game for Murray State. Um, just that press, they were relent relentless and they didn't stop. Two players for Valpo coming at the same time as it did end up going to the racers and Good chip ball, but Henry unable to get on the end of it. Good play there by Barber to get a throw in for the racers. Taken quickly up to Young. Ball staying on this near side, trying to get pushed through for Barber. And Joyner's touch, and I think that might be the last meaningful touch as time is elapsing Seven. here in Murray. Cleared away, and it'll be 1-1 as we head into the locker room here between the racers and the Beacons. Bringing some halftime stats and more after this. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Cannot tell who the right back is, but as soon as I get clear visual all these numbers, I will let you know. Yeah, uh, Chase has really impressed me. I'm actually kind of excited to see this matchup between Tori Shrimp and Chase Ray. Um, they're both very similar built, both strong on the ball. You both know how to use their bodies pretty well, so I think that would be a good battle between those two. Um, and I think it was a smart decision by the Valpo coach to um, put Chase in just because, like I said, she um, wins a lot of balls in the air and just uses her body a lot better than I think um, Cassidy Eckstein did. And she's taller, so it also helps because um, Tori Shrimp had a few inches on her as well. And the handball goes against the racers. The racers bench was crying for one there on that far side as we'll see the first yellow card go into the racers bench as it's Matt Lodge who's, you know, first time I've ever seen him booked <laughs> uh, personally. Um, but uh, I don't think he was impressed with the, uh, the referee on that occasion and he uh, finds himself a yellow card. Um, I don't remember Lodge saying too much in the first half, but I mean, I at least think they could have gave him a little bit more of a warning. Uh, he kind of just went straight for the card. I guess that's, that's the rest way of trying to control the game because sometimes if your coaches get into it, it can rowdy up the girls too. Good interchange here in the middle as it'll get back to Morrison. In for Anderson now. It's Graf on the ball. Some good triangles here by the Beacons. Anderson again showing. Ball dug out here on the wing for Valpo. DeSacco working in, trying to get this on her left foot. Space opening up, cuts this back. Now out on the far side, racers peeling for offsides. This will be ricocheted off of Hardy and it will be done really well by Hardy there to knock and see the corner kick. It'll be a throw in. Yeah, it's almost like the Beacons came out this half and a little more like how the racers did the first half, a little bit uh, more energy right now. Oh, rear here now trying to find space put in towards the goal. Botcher will hit this away. Now another chance falls for Anderson. Anderson trying to line it up and first bit of involvement for Skorupski as she just tipped that over the net. And that was a great job by Jamie Skorupski. Uh, um, not starting the game, trying to uh, uh, kind of getting just thrown into the field of the game or the play of the game is very hard as a keeper to just automatically just be ready for those kind of situations. So I got to give Jamie her credit. Yeah, just a small warm up with graduate assistant Izzy Heckman in the interim between the two halves. So good first save under her belt here. Put in towards the back post and nodded away by Henry and this ball will go all the way back to Abby White trying to play this up for Kelsey Jones. Ball put away by Wilson, Etter on able to corral this. Good pressure here, now Joyner. 
Joyner lines up a shot, and that'll be another save for Skorupski. Bodker now, way for Hardy. Payne trying to skip through a few Valpo players and Kelsey Jones, or Kelsey James rather, finds herself offside. I think I went to high school with Kelsey Jones, so apologies <laughs> to Kelsey. Wilson to take. This ball put in towards the edge of the 18 yard box. Ray Young's there. It'll fall to Chase Ray. Joyner loses out to Bodker as Wilson tries to chip this in over the top again. Soraya Young challenges, but this will fall to the goalkeeper, Coriel. Yeah, Soraya does a good job of kind of just uh, throwing the defenders off on a lot of the short balls or through balls. You think she's going to get it, and she doesn't get it, but it could create another opportunity for one of her teammates. So if they're just switched on and on the same page as her. Yeah, I mean, defenders are always told not to let the ball bounce. So even if she can just put them off to where there is a bit of uncertainty, then you have players like Lauren Payne and Edder that are crashing, hopefully getting an easy opportunity as Shrimp. Shrimp, uh, no foul called against her as she uh, got taken out by a Valpo player. I wouldn't have said that was a foul because she, she kind of just went all in, all in or nothing. Um, I think the ref did a good job on not calling that because if it would have been a foul, it would have been more so against Tori because she kind of just threw her body out there. Um, a little uncontrollably, but I think both players walked away um, safe and. Young here now, fed by Payne, and she's tripped up, and that'll definitely a, be a penalty for the Racers. And we go to the pocket, be a yellow card as Morrison, I believe, was just caught flat footed. And we'll see who steps up to take this for the Racers. It looks like it will be Lauren Payne, and a great job there by Soraya Young. Yeah, no, great um, dribbling at the defenders. Uh, Soraya definitely has that pace. So whether um, Morrison took her down or not, I definitely think Soraya was going to beat her. Payne against Coriel. And a great save there by Coriel and the Racers. Can't find the lead here in the second half as good placement there by Payne, but Coriel did a really good job getting across. Yeah, no, she did. She got a full hand on that ball, um, pushed it out for a corner kick. That was a great save by Coriel, definitely. Uh, hopefully that gives the Valparaiso Beacons uh, a lot of energy, just having their keeper show up for them and Bill Morrison out. Um, as a defender, she should be very grateful she has Coriel on the net for her. I think I know somebody's getting dinner bought for them tonight as this ball's put in by Bodker towards the center of the box. First header won by Anderson. Now this is pushed back for Edder. She has to be careful here. No racers back, and this gets put over the top for DeSacco. Wilson chasing DeSacco one-on-one with Skorupski. Skorupski comes out of her net. A really good claim there by Skorupski now. Panic trying to get back into the goal line, and this ball put across. Anderson there, and Valpo goal. Abby White on the back end. As Skorupski did a great job making that first initial save, but Racer is unable to get reorganized, and Abby White was free on that back post for DeSacco assist. Yeah, the Racers, um, it was a great break by the Beacons. Uh, the Racers just kind of got caught ball watching. I think Jamie did a great job coming out, making that first initial save, trying to put their off placement and then running back towards the net. Um, the Racers just, like I said, got caught ball watching and didn't look at the back post. It was a great ball. Um, right decision to uh, play that ball through. Um, but there's still enough time the racers could come back into it. They've done it before and they can do it again. Certainly that penalty save may have uh, gave the Beacons a bit of a boost here as Coriel ranged a little bit out of her net. Etter now trying to find Young. Ball still not cleared here. Shrimp takes an effort and Coriel had to be smart to that one as Shrimp really kind of awkward shot shape as she was had to uh, get her body behind that, but a good effort nonetheless is. Yeah, she got a really good strike on that um, for it being straight out of the air. Um, 
She just hit it really well. Just as unfortunate that she didn't have much control of where it was going to uh, specifically go. But if she could have just at least put it uh, more towards a corner, I definitely think that would have been a goal. Morrison. Ball on the edge of the Valpo box. Chance now for Valpo, put across and dug out. That was Molly O'Rear who scuffed the finish just a bit now. Etter trying to play up to Young. Morrison all the way back to Coriel and she has to clear that away with some panic as. Now cries for handball from the Valpo bench. Lauren Payne doing good effort there to close down the options, Cole, trying to take a quick throw in. Yeah, I think the racers um, on the field and also the coaches on the bench just have to kind of calm down. They're getting the girls a little rowdy. Um, There's thir still 37 minutes in the game. That's enough time to get a, a goal and let alone a couple goals. They're definitely a good team and they can do it. They just gotta calm down and not rush as much because them rushing cause um, they could concede more goals, which is not what they need right now. Young unable to get that cross away as this ball falls kindly to on rushing Anderson. Anderson looking to play in Joyner. Joyner's got plenty of space, but not a lot of options in front of her. Anderson showing here now. Joyner working against Bodker. Anderson looking for a cross field pass. Tillman, Hillman has space, opens it up on the far side for DeSacco. Sacco working against Hardy. Sacco trying to go down the line and just runs out of the playing field as she was unable to cut that back in time as Hardy did a really good job just standing her up and making that difficult to get that ball back across. Yeah, the racers are doing a, j a good job. Um, I still think they need to calm down just a little bit. Um, like I said, there's still plenty of time. They're trying to force too many balls as if they're in the last five minutes of the game. There's still 36 minutes, so they just need to um, possess it, play their game, play how they know how to play, and um, a goal will come out of that. Kelsey James called for the late tackle on Wilson as she was trying to get this ball away, and Wilson taking a few free yards in the eyes of the official. <laughs> Ball one here by the racers, trying to be flicked on for Etter. Will get cleared away? Decent touch by the ball boy. I know, great touch. <laughs> Saying earlier, he's got uh, got shoes like boats, so uh, surprising that uh, the yeah. boats must work. Yeah, well. the uh, soft touch there. Wilson, ball put in. Saray Young trying to flick it on. Shrimp just never wrapped her leg around this, and will go out for a goal kick. Yeah, I want to say Shrimp may have rushed that shot. Um, I don't remember if there was any Beacon players around or maybe she could have had a time to take a touch, possess it. Um, I know she can ping those kind of balls like that into the goal, um, but with 35 minutes and being 2-1 um, down, you want to um, make the smart decisions and not waste your chances. Young throws her body at this. Cole playing on Etter. Etter, good first touch towards the goal. Etter now with a chance, and she's cleared out, but it – it was a slice shot. We'll see what the decision from the referee is. It's a corner kick. Uh, she was clattered into by Abby White, who was just making a last-ditch tackle there and was able to win the ball. Yeah, from here it looked as if, almost as if it was going to be a goal kick, um, but I guess the ref saw something we didn't see up here. Bodker to take. Good position there. Bodker's on the end, and Hardy was taken down. No foul called by the referee, and now another chance for Valpo to break, and Soraya Young had to make a challenge there because there was no defenders back for the racers. And the referee slows things up. I think uh, the Valpo player might be counting themselves very lucky because it uh, looked like Hardy was certainly, I mean, I 
fouled in my in my uh, my opinion. Yeah, that's a tough call b for the ref because it was kind of a 50-50 ball. Both went for the header, and there's two Valpo uh, beacons right there on that defending play. Um, it could have gone either way. It just depends on the ref's decision. Um, some people would say it's a foul. Some wouldn't. Um, I don't really know what I'd call it necessarily. Skrupski left that one as it was Joyner lining up the shot. Good clip ball in by James. She's seen a lot more of the ball here uh, since Felpo gotten a bit more control on the game. She was not really seeing much of it at all in that first half, so I'm sure she's happy to uh, get a bit more of the ball, be able to play a bit more, because that first beginning stage of the first half, they were just hoofing it up there and just hoping that she could do something. So Yeah, I definitely think after the goal that the Beacon scored, the second goal of the game, um, like I said, um, the racers have just been kind of panicking and it's opening up a lot more opportunities, like that corner kick that Soraya had to step on and just um, those kind of opportunities. The game's a lot more open for the Beacons than it was the first half because the racers are panicking. Beacons are also, their press is significantly higher up the field as racers are finding it harder to get out. Young here on this near side working against White. White who has the crucial goal here in this game. Yeah, and I think the Beacons know that a lot of our attack comes through Soraya. Um, so they're gonna keep an eye on her at all times, making sure they know where she's at. Cause if she gets on that ball, there's gonna be a chance of a corner, just the slightest touch. She'll create an opportunity for um, one of the players. Henry now trying to line up a shot. It'll get deflected. And this took its last touch off of Payne, so it'll be a throw in for Valparaiso, and we'll see their first sub of this second half. Garcia comes in, fifth year senior. This will be a goal kick. Yeah, and the Beacons are going to do everything they can just to knock that extra, even if it's just a few seconds off the clock. Um, they're going to do all they can, being 2-1 up, and just not giving the racers chances because they know the racers can get themselves just in, back in the game just like they did. Especially uh, coming off of a last weekend on Sunday, they scored seven goals, so they know they um, it's a goal-scoring team that the racers have on this field today. Payne patiently finds Cole. Cole now working against it, and she'll win a throw in for the racers. Hardy goes to Payne. Payne lines up a shot, and oh, a great save there by Coriel as we saw Payne score from a similar position against Illinois State. Yeah, that's a great save. Uh, the Beacons have a good keeper on their hands. Um, I can definitely see why the Beacons are um, second in the Missouri Valley Conference right now. A lot of that comes from the, just the keeper that they have in net. She um, gets them out of a lot of situations with Payne's uh, penalty kick, that save to make a corner. Ball here on the back post and see if Hardy can take a swing at it. Now chance for Bodker. Bodker pinging around in the box. It'll get put away by DeSacco and Shades of handball there from Soraya Young, but gets away with it, and this ball will get put away. Chloe Barthouse playing ball boy. Yeah, she's just trying to make sure she doesn't uh, hit that ball, have that ball hit her. Not too elegantly as she's uh, recovering from a surgery as this ball gets put up to Etter. Etter looking for space, put on her left foot and trying to drag this towards that far side. Just didn't get enough power on it to beat Coriel. Yeah, the racers are still knocking on the door. Uh, the Beacons, besides that quick transition that got them that goal and then a possible uh, opportunity that Soraya had to put to a stop, they haven't really gotten much out of their half right now. The racers are putting that pressure on and just trying to get that uh, game time goal for them. DeSacco into James. James, good one-two with DeSacco. See if she can keep this ball in. She can, it'll go out for a racer goal kick. We'll see another change for Valpo. Dugan in as James makes way as she's had a great second half so far here today. 
Yeah, and it looks like the Beacons are really going heavy on the right side against Mary Hardy. Um, they're trying not to let her get forward, but also applying enough pressure to where she's not able to run box to box like she usually does typically most games. Um, they must have uh, watched a few film because they know Grace Bacher, she doesn't really get too high up the field. Um, she kind of stays in her space. Grace Bodker here now. Just speak of the devil as she's <laughs> on the ball, cutting in towards the midfield, pass cut out, and Etter trying to win a duel with Garcia. DeSacco now against Hardy. Hardy trying to force DeSacco back. We'll see what direction this goes in as far as throwing goes. It'll be a Valpo throw, and we'll see another Valpo change. Eckstein comes in. I think this could be a big advantage for the racers. Uh, like I was saying earlier, um, Chase Ray and um, Tori Shrimp, they're very similar players. They like to use their body. And uh, in the first half, um, Tori Shrimp was winning a lot of balls over um, Cassidy Eckstein. So I think uh, this will be a huge part in trying to get um, Tori Shrimp up high too. Better finds Payne. Payne trying to clip this in over the top. Young. On this far side, ball will fall to Henry. Henry for Young. Young working against White. Finds an inside pass. Coles there. This gets put away. Bodker now trying to clip this in towards the back post. And Hardy was crashing on goal. DeSacco takes this away. First touch. Take it to Shrimp, though. And they'll have a collision in midfield. The ball eventually stays with Shrimp. Hardy now. Etter. Calling for the ball, bypasses her out to Young. Young, cross the side, and Abby Jones, important deflection there. It'll be a corner kick for the Racers. The Racers have looked vulnerable so far on corner kicks. I mean, only the, the one player back normally, it's Young, as she's done a lot of running here as she'll uh, take up her defensive duties. Racers yeah, lined I up on the six yard box. I think uh, Young, she's kind of like a dual threat for the racers. You can put her up top. She'll Ball do her here job. now on the racers' corner goes begging as a lot of balls in that near side. Uh, no racer just grasping the chance. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, but like I was saying, I think uh, Saraya Young, she's kind of a dual threat. You can put her up top. She'll create chances, and then um, they're not gonna. The beacons won't break as um, often like she had a play where she slid tackled. Um, and went out for a throw in for the beacon. So you can kind of put her anywhere and know she's always going to perform for the racers. Cole coming back. Up to Hardy. Hardy, good ball in to Young, and she's pushed off the ball, and no foul called. Shrimp shifting this ball over and cut out by White. Young now, Young and White. White coming out. Better player on this instance. Bodker up for Etter. At her spins. At her assessing her option, trying to get to the end line, puts this ball back across the 18 yard box, falls for Cole. Cole lines up a shot to Etter, or Shrimp rather, and Shrimp right down the throat of Coriel. Yeah, if Shrimp can try and place it more in the corners. Uh, right now, both shots she's taken this half at least have just been straight to Coriel. So um, the racers having good build up play. It's just the final bits of pieces of putting uh, placing the ball in those corners to at least create a chance for Crayola to make a save, make a corner, or possibly a goal. Payne did really well to get back there. Now Cole on the ball. Young showing for it, but some really good defense there by Graf as she was able to bomb in. Etter keeps this ball in bounds. We're against White. Goes the inside route. White pulling her back. Fairly, according to the official, and Etter just trying to get that cross in, but ran out of room in the end. Bodker is combining. We're going to Bodker stepping in, but Anderson, important interception here now. Joiner. She'll just win, throw in for Valpo. Calm things down as Valpo's getting a little stretched, so. Reassess, get the shape back. That's a few extra steps, I'd say. Yeah, White might have 
shuffled a, uh, a very, t uh, <laughs> uh, quite a distance, but um, didn't harm the racers anyway as Young comes up second best against Morrison who did a good job. Graf now back for Coriel and her clearance away. Garcia, good first touch there. Back for Anderson. Anderson looking to switch the play over to Sacco. Great ball there by Anderson to Sacco now. Working against Hardy. Hardy backpedaling, giving her the space. And now infield, cut away by Bodker. Edder will have space, take her first touch. Young on the outside of her now. White trying to work back into position. Edder. A lot of beacons to beat, and she makes a mess of her pass. Yeah, I think in that instance, Edder could have kept driving. I know it was 1v4. Um, or just kind of restart, just get the ball forward. You can get more numbers up top. Henry now looking to commit White, but she did really well to stand her ground and just cut off that passing lane. Trying to play this over the top. Yeah, I think the Beacons, they're trying to just get it out and just kind of waste time versus um, possess it. They're, they can possess the ball. Um, and then the racers are just trying to bomb forward, get a chance in, get runners in the box. Young here cutting this ball across and a scuffed clearance. Ball still not cleared by Valpo. Falls to Shrimp. Shrimp out for Etter. Game is getting really stretched here. Young on the ball. Young puts it out of play. A lot of players' hands on their knees. Young and White on this right side have been running for quite a while. We'll see Floyd check in for the racers. Payne makes way. Yeah, they've been, uh, racers' attack has been very heavy on this uh, near side. Um, White and uh, Soraya Young have been going at it quite a bit, and Edder's been driving at White kind of. She hasn't stopped running the past, like, five minutes, it feels like. Edder, good first touch. Henry providing some support. Ball comes right back to White's side. Joiner trying to provide some assistance, and Henry unable to get around her. Some good shielding there by the forward. Yeah, that was a great way to use her body. Uh, just kind of throw Henry off. Um, I think Henry tried to <laughs> use her speed, but Joyner just has a few more, has just a different gear than she does. Um, she did a great job on using her body, and now she's getting a well-deserved rest. Uh, I think the Beacons have done a good job on just getting those crosses out because the racers have just been pel uh, pelleting them with crosses, and they've just been doing a good job of clearing them off their lines. Gatunos checks in as well for Valpo. She's in the ball here now. Gracie Pack came in for Soraya Young, so maybe just trying to get her a last-minute rest before she re-enters. Dugan now working against Bodker. Cuts back onto her left foot. Bodker stretches out a leg, trying to do the cutback. It was deflected, and it'll be a corner kick as Skorupski couldn't just keep the ball in play, I suppose. We'll see. Racers all seem confused, but it was the official on the far side who had signaled that the ball had crossed the end line. Anderson to take. Skrupski trying to get that position. Penalty spot, delivery. Floyd with a collision and doesn't get the benefit of the referee's whistle. It'll be, it will be a free kick, or it'll be throwing rather for the racers. I think the rest were just kind of deciding who was gonna grab the ball and that's whose ball it was gonna be. They really didn't know whose it was, but I would say that's a great call not calling that foul. Um, Marty Floyd, she tends to fall often. Uh, she kind of looks for those calls a lot. So um, I don't know if this is a ref uh, the racers have had before, but it was a smart call, 50-50, both going for the ball. Mari just thought if she falls, she'd get that foul. Some refs will give it to you, some won't, and I guess this ref doesn't. That's definitely a handball, though, right there. Racers incensed, but the possession does eventually make its way back to Murray State. Calm play there by Etter. Chrissy Pack trying to seal out White, who I'm sure be thankful that the ball has not been going her direction. 
potentially a handball there again on Etter, but. It's about two handballs, the ref, he missed one, so I'm guessing he's just letting another one slide. Dugan, good play here, Gatunas, taking it off her. Wilson, clearance works out perfectly for her. Etter now, work back at Tunis. Cole, trying to play in Floyd. Floyd's run took her a bit in field as ball was just behind her. And Morgan Parker's ball just unable to get to the racer player. Destaco, working against, and this ball put across. No foul parade, no players at the back post. Bodker clips this up and out of bounds. Yeah, the Beacons are just uh, telling players to leave it, letting their defenders take the ball. She just keeps walking a mile, but I mean, I guess that's okay. Uh, the refs aren't saying much about it. Dugan working against Wilson. Wilson trying not to concede a corner kick in a battle, and she'll eventually clear this away. Gracie Pack, she'll have a lot to do here, and just about does it. Ball falls to Cole. Out for Hardy. Floyd comes in field. Sacco again, she's had an excellent game so far. Now she's running against Marty Floyd. Sacco against Bodker. Bodker sticks out a leg, able to hold her up just a bit, but Sacco back to that end line and another back post delivery. And Grace Bodker able to just chest it down to a grateful Jamie Skorupski. Yeah, that was very good positioning by Grace Bodker. Uh, both Bodker sisters, Morgan has those long legs, so she'll get a foot in occasionally every once in a while and Grace just following her runner not letting her and losing her in the box because if she wasn't there that would have been potentially a third goal and an even bigger hole the racers would have had to dig themselves out of. Dugan on the ball here now. Katunas back for Anderson. Anderson looking to switch the play. It's cut out by Bodker. Floyd now on the ball. Yeah, I really wish both teams would just settle down and try to possess the ball like they were. Um, I don't really know why the Beacons are kind of rushing to get an extra goal. Just settle in and um, just possess it. Keep the racers having to press you. And then the racers need to calm down. And um, there's 15 minutes left. Uh, I would probably say the last 10, that's when you guys should just go really heavy with pressing. Um, but I mean, it is hard when you don't have Saria Young in the game at the moment. Sacco. Got a foul called. Haley Cole had barged into the back of her. Morrison strides over. Not a lot of Beacon players committed to the racers box. There's four on the edge of the 18 yard box. Skrupski comes out and it was Gatunas who was close as Skrupski looks to release Etter. Etter's got plenty of space to run into. Gatunas chasing back. Etter looking for options. She goes in the middle, over hits both Cole, Floyd unable to get to it. All put into a promising position. Good flick on there by Gracie Pack. She's cleared out and no foul called or I think there is now a late whistle on sure. It was unclear to me exactly what the call was. But we will see a change at the back. It'll be Cam Barber coming in for Bodker. And Soraya Young comes back into the game as well. Yeah, what I think uh, Lodge is eventually going to do, potentially go to a three, brock, uh, three back and uh, move Grace Bodker. Um, to where Morgan Parker is potentially just trying to create more numbers forward um, so they can get a goal. Shoving the back against, I believe that was Etter, be a free kick to the Beacons and 
I'm sure they won't mind getting a free kick in that position. Yeah, and I think also um, bringing in Camille Barber, um, she'll be very helpful because, like I said, uh, Grace Bacher, she doesn't drive forward that often, but Barbara will always bomb forward occasionally. Um, she's pretty quick, so she can get by players, and she uh, makes some good decisions, um, which earned, earned her earlier in the season um, defender of the, uh, of the week. Wilson able to put this one out for a throw, and we'll see another Valpo substitution. Garcia to come out. Chase Ray to come in. Looks like another change is being readied for the racers as well. Ball here on the back post and Villacres, or Skrupski, pardon me, good claim there. Skrupski goes quick and Unable to be handled by Barber. White up to Dugan. And the Racers will win a goal kick on this occasion. I'm pretty surprised the refs haven't said anything about her. Walking those extra miles up on her every throw in she takes. Uh, I feel like most refs were typically like telling, uh, especially last Thursday or last Sunday, we had a lot of refs that kept saying, move back, move back. Um, just because the girls kept moving uh, a lot forward, more forward than the ball went out. It's taken off of Payne's head, who had checked in. Yeah, I think the, uh, the racer collective here is more uh, concerned about the issue of time wasting uh, by the Valparaiso players. Referee may have to make a note as Molly O'Rear was sandwiched between two racers players and got herself a free kick. Yeah, that was a good call by the ref. Um, she got she turned out of it. I'm not really sure how, but um, then there's that third. I want to say Audrey Henry was right there, so that was just that third person, and there's just no way she was getting out of that one. Ball clipped in. Tunis able to win the first header. Back to Skorupski. Looks like she's assessing her options long, and this one be put away. Some good distance here by the racer goalkeeper. Back for Barber. Barber trying to put this up the line, and we'll see a throw in for Valpo. Official on this near side. Urging White. At her. Back to White and being closed down by Cole. Cole did really well to win this ball. Now trying to find a position and a key interception there by Morrison to cut out the cross. Yeah, the racers have finally got the ball back up um, in their attacking half. Um, the Beacons have kind of been all over the place, more so in the middle of the field in general. It hasn't really been on too much on one um, side half. Cole to take. Put in a great position and just over the net, it was Morgan Bodker who had an equally great chance in the first half and a bit closer that time for sure. Yeah, just from where we're standing, it looked like that ball was going to go in. Uh, they have a lot of good aerial threats in the on corners and free kicks with Bodker and Wilson and Audrey Henry always typically getting on the end of it. And then if it gets knocked down, you know, you got um, Mary Hardy there to also put a few chances away. Morgan Parker called for the push in the back. As we'll see, the clock will be stopped here at 9.38 mark. Morrison clips this in and see a similar foul that was just called against the racers, for the racers, as this is a chance now for the racers to play it in long via Megan Wilson. Good distance there 
by the English woman. Cole challenging. This will fall to Parker. Parker out for Etter and Etter just unable to range over to get to this one, but the racers will have the ball in a promising position, able to employ a bit of a press here as Valpo's backed up in their corner. And Morgan Parker boots a bit too high there and will be a free kick to Valpo. Yeah, I just wish um, Morgan Parker would make a few smarter decisions. Uh, you know Valpo's trying to waste time on the clock, so trying to prevent the ball from going out. I know it's inevitable sometimes, but and just that high kick, like just be smarter um, when you're down 2-1 uh, in crunch time with only almost eight minutes to go. O'Rear trying to release Dugan. Dugan working against Hardy. Two players now that she's got to contend with as Payne clears this ball up. Young working against Graf, and Graf will put it out of bounds. It'll be a racer throw, and we'll see a racer sub. It'll be Tori Shrimp back in for Morgan Parker. And we saw Tsurea Youngs get tripped up just a bit. It'll be a free kick for the racers in a promising position. Cam Barber, the furthest racer back, in case of the quick counterattack. As the referee is tired enough shenanigans between what looks like Anderson and Mo Bodker. Yeah, I didn't really see anything happening. Did you see anything? I was not looking in that general direction, but uh, no, two players have certainly not been uh, afraid of any challenges here today as Bodker had won that last header. So see a bit of a scrum here. Good ball put in by Haley Cole and Bodker ranged up. Let's see who it took a nick off of it. Racers are saying it came off a of Valpo head, but it will be a goal kick and there'll be another change for Valparaiso. Yeah, I don't think anyone got a touch on that one. It's a tough call. It could have skidded on someone's head or maybe hair, but from our angle, it looked like um, it just went straight through the box. It was a good ball by Haley Cole. James checks in for Valpo. It was Dugan who made way. Shrimp goes down, clutching her face, so maybe caught an elbow or something in that exchange. Now ball put in behind from White for James. James, and she'll take this to the corner by herself some time. Two racers against her here now, and ref playing AR on this far side. Cam Barber shoveling this away for Henry. Henry in the midfield. Etter trying to play for Cole. Will fall to Henry. Young did a good job here now. And eventually the racers run out of room as they were just trying to jam it up this near side. Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, I've seen Kelsey James play since she was since we were young. Um, we're from the same club. and Young here skips away from two players into the box, and that's certainly a handball that came off an elbow, but no call made by the official. I think it would have been the AR who would have been the only one who would have been able to see that clearly. I think the only reason they didn't call it was just due to um, it was kind of in a natural position. It wasn't out of place or anything. Um, definitely a handball, though. Um, definitely a missed call by the racers, or for the racers. I'm sure the racers will be uh, really unhappy with that as James finds herself on side working against four racer defenders as Cam Barber, who comes in full-blooded. Gatunis. Looking to play the ball into the middle area. Falls for Anderson. Anderson, we're going to get Shrimp put away as far as Eckstein. Eckstein out to Gatunis again. Just over five minutes here. This is when they should definitely be double teaming. Uh, Edder shouldn't be jogging back. She needs to be uh, applying that pressure with Barber. Um, I know she's played almost 90 minutes uh, potentially, but. Ex Edder cleaned out there by Eckstein. Oh 
Wait. I figured this was a free kick, I'm not gonna lie, so I'm uh, <laughs> I'm just as confused as you are. I thought it was a free kick as well, but yeah, I guess not. I thought it was a uh, late late foul that was called, but Soraya Young skips away from a few players trying to play in Young. Young, Coriel did really well to get off her line and make the play as Young was bearing down. When we were talking earlier about uh, Lauren Payne, and not a natural winger, natural forward, but she does have a knack of finding those really good goal scoring opportunities and finding those spaces and Young nearly found her again. Yeah, um, the racers really attack heavily with uh, Soraya and Sydney Etter, but um, Lauren Payne, she'll come in those little pockets of space just randomly. She gets lost by defenders because she's not your typical player that's going to drive and beat you on the dribble, um, but she always just pops up and finds her way in the back of the net. And that's how she is um, second on the team, or tie for first on team with goals this year. Haley Cole trying to get her 10 yards. Two man wall for Valpo and ball put in over the top and racers will be able to retake this and Paul Cox and Matt Lodge unhappy that the clock hadn't stopped as now we will get underway. Clipped in over the top, Bodker at the back post, Henry across and off the post. The racers, as close as you can get as it came off the woodwork, will be a corner kick. Yeah, that was a great ball by uh, Cole and um, very good on Henry to get on the edge of that. Uh, it was definitely on the way towards the goal, just knocked off the post and straight off of Valpo's, uh, looks like shin guard. George Major is still trying to get some control here as just a bit too much pushing and shoving. Haley Cole, ball put in at the near post, cut out by the first Valpo defender, Payne. Now back to Cole. Cole chips this in over the top, Hardy's there and just couldn't direct it towards goal as she was diving down. Barber takes a touch, steps into the midfield. Barber looking for options, plays this up to Young. Young's first touch gets away from her, but still on the ball here now. Young battling through players and eventually cleared away by Valpo. Back up to Young. Young playing the flick on for Henry. Now back to Etter. Etter shipping this on the back post. Payne caught on her heels, but it'll go to Hardy. Hardy trying to find space, but this will be cleared away. Yeah, it almost looked like the Valpo defense has like a back line, kind of like a five and then like a sweeper. Coriel keeper. here now has to come out as Soraya Young on the back post. Go ahead. I was saying it looks like um, the Valpo defense had like a block of five or six and then um, I want to say it was Morrison who was kind of like sweeper keeper kind of thing. Yellow card for Soraya Young as she was trying to stop the goalkeeper from playing it. 90 seconds here left for the racers to come back. For Valpo, if this score stands, that'll be second game in a row coming back from a deficit. Really impressive road trip here by the Beacons if they can pull this off. Yeah, they're bringing everyone back. Um. Better now. Has space and Henry trying to shovel this out to Young and unable to Get the pass to come off. White. Barber. Nearly ran out of time. It'll fall to Etter Etter. Trying to line up Young Young. And this, we'll see who last came off. It'll be a corner kick. It was like pinball over there. For yeah, there was, a there was a question of who that might have came off of last. But will be the racers as... Skorupski will come up for this final 30 seconds. Racers bombing into the box. Cole taken quickly on the back post. Hardy's there. It'll fall to Payne. Skorupski will have to backpedal. 
Put in towards the edge of the 18-yard box. First one by Wilson and cut away. It'll be another corner. 10 seconds here. Seven, six, five. Racers take, Cole to take. And it will be put away by Valpo and it will be a Valpo victory. Two to one over the Racers. We'll give you the post game show. After this, you're watching ESPN Plus. You might have heard of Carvana and that we sell cars online. What you probably didn't know is that we're in the business. Wherever we come from.